good evening. So I wanted to talk to you folks tonight more about the government cover-up and uh, a very obvious misinformation campaign or disinformation campaign. It seems that there's uh, intentionally a lot of bad information or information left out. Uh, this kind of goes along with the cover-up. As I've talked about in the past, uh, everything from men in black light characters coming out telling people after a Sasquatch encounter um, that they saw a bear or to keep quiet about it and threats and intimidation, very similar to like what you see in the UFO world. And there's also a lot of reports of uh, these things getting hit by cars, Bigfoots getting hit by cars or being shot or poisoned or something. And, uh, you know, Black Hawk helicopters, the military coming in and uh, also goes along with missing people with the military being called out and normal search parties and stuff being cut out of rescues of seemingly normal events of missing people. Uh, that's kind of getting into four on one territory. We know this is going on. Uh, the cover up seems to be pretty obvious. What's less obvious until you really start to point at all the signs is the misinformation campaign or disinformation campaign, like I said. Uh, so we're going to talk about that a little bit tonight, but more importantly, uh, we're also going to talk about why this may be. Now, my personal theories have kind of evolved and, uh, there's a lot of reasons for why I think they're trying to cover it up, but I think it has to come down to the core of what these creatures are, of what uh, Sasquatch might really be. And I think some of the clues after thinking about the disinformation and the cover-up and some of the reports and encounters people have had uh, kind of got me thinking in some new directions, and I kind of wanted to share those thoughts with you guys. So I find it fascinating over the years there are a number of encounters, especially if you really look hard, um, quite a few of them actually, of reports of people shooting and killing these things, and uh, which would be a harrowing experience in general, and uh, you're lucky to get out alive. But I mean, the body always ends up going missing, or the government comes in and takes it, or it limps off, or the other Bigfoots carry it away, or they get out of the area in a big hurry and don't come back for it, and all quite understandable. I remember years ago on Coast to Coast AM in the 90s, uh, somebody told Art Bell that he had shot some and buried him on his property. And I thought it was quite fascinating that he didn't want them released until after he died, the location, uh, in case they were actually considered hominid species. He didn't want to go to jail for it. And I remember on Sasquatch Chronicles, one of the early episodes, it was also on his best of, one of my all-time favorites is the deathbed uh, confession where this guy uh, in his old age said that he shot one for the government. And when he shot one for the government, he says it it cried, it made human noises, it sounded a lot like a person, it made gestures and breathed and its eyes looked a lot like a human and it really bothered him because it wasn't like shooting a deer or a bear. It was like shooting a person. And I've heard lots of reports of people hitting him with cars and the bodies going missing and uh, people saying that same thing, where it howled or it cried out. And uh, people saying that it had a really human quality to it. And for a long time, my standard go-to theory is that they're very human-like, but they are an animal. And that they uh, are very intelligent animal and they're human-like, but they are not humans. And I think it's very fascinating when you go to these Bigfoot conferences and you have all these really good guest speakers. I mean, I'm not putting down their work at all. But the I remember seeing Cliff Brackman, and the very first thing he said out of his mouth a couple of years ago at the IBC is, these creatures, and a few people gasped, he says, look, they're creatures, they're animals, they are not humans. And I said that was a rather distinctive comment of complete authority from a subject that we're really not sure what they are, especially for something with a lot of human-like features. And a lot of other speakers, Jeff Meldrum, all said that this that this is not a human. And Jeff Meldrum, coming from a uh, biologist background and human anatomy and all that other stuff, said, "Look, they're not human. They're human-like, but they're not human." But then you contrast that with the thousands of years of Native American traditions, and they all spoke of these things being as a tribe of people. Um, why else would they refer to them as cannibals? Cannibals mean you eat your own kind. So why would you refer to them as cannibal giants if you didn't consider them? part of your race, species, or whatever. And then when you go to the Bluff Creek conspiracy, one of the big things was that the uh, original film that was released 
to the public was airbrushed and MK Davis and others had to go back and edit it. And there are other versions of it out there that aren't airbrushed to cover the face, to make the face look more hairy, make it look more gorilla like to extend the uh, sagittal crest, to give them, to get away from this narrative that these things are really human. And then you look at a lot of descriptions and, and in fair defense, there are a lot of descriptions where they look just like a big upright chimpanzee. They don't look human at all. And there are the descriptions where they look very gorilla like, um, which you would not consider human, just like someone took a gorilla and straightened them out and stretched them out. But then you also get a lot of reports, renderings, people's opinions, thoughts of these things being very human. Now, the, one of the ongoing theories of why the cover-up is, is these things are possibly the Nephilim, some kind of ancient biblical demon, some kind of fallen giant that's crossbreed with humans and apes. And then there's the very controversial DNA uh, studies by uh, Melba Ketchum. And a lot of people said she was crazy and she said this and that, and that's not a valid study. And other people really support her work. And I know there's a few other people doing DNA work and hair sample analysis. So I think it's like all kind of quite fascinating, especially when you look at a lot of the descriptions that describe them as human. In its eyes, they said it was very human, but it wasn't. So I think it's really quite fascinating to add it all up that maybe the cover-up has less to do with these things are the Nephilim or something bad and more to do with that they are a race of humans that should not be messed with, that need protection. And the government says if they can just deny their existence, they don't have to worry about protecting these humans that occasionally interact with us in maybe a negative way. It would impact the logging industry, forestry, um, recreation, hunting, the whole narrative of our society. So maybe instead of looking at them from as, as they are the Nephilim or something sinister, maybe as they are like a tribe of really primitive people, but think of them as people. And shooting them could be homicide. So maybe that's one alternate theory to the Nephilim theory uh, to why there's such a big cover-up and why they're going through all this trouble. When we look at some of the physical evidence of having a very large human-like foot, although not like ours, a lot more flat-footed, and having midfoot flexibility, uh, which makes sense that, uh, you know, something two or three times the size of a human, four or five times the size of a human, uh, but with our general build would have to be built differently. You couldn't have arches because they would be collapsed down to support that much weight. And there's a, the way that their step is shown, uh, it seems like their ankle bones and their leg bones are a lot more over the center of their foot for even distribution, which makes sense. I know uh, Dr. Jeff Meldrum talks about a lot of this stuff, and he's such a great biologist, and he knows all this and looking at anatomy. And we look at our um, biological cousins, some of our uh, cousins throughout history, like uh, – the Australopithecus, Homo habilis, Homo erectus, up to Neanderthals, having very robust skulls, having more of a crest on their head, uh, having less of a frontal lobe, having a, a, a harder, thicker brow ridge, um, you know, for protection of the eyes, uh, generally a lot more robust jaw and for eating and chewing everything down. And we can likewise that if a Sasquatch is three or four times the size of a human, it would have to have a very robust, thick skeleton, you know, positioned differently at the hips, different positionally over the feet and shoulders just to support that weight. And from reports of these things of how fast they can run and how they can move around and some of the strength they have at moving trees, they'd have to have a super robust skeleton, kind of like some of our early cousin ancestors are built. Um, now, I understand how the evolution theory works. We'll call it a theory if you believe in creation. Uh, I completely understand. Uh, I know that one didn't die out and another one sprang up. There's a lot of human-like creatures out there at one time. And uh, we look back at other reports of people who have shot these things and uh, general descriptions, and there's, there's, a, there's a lot of human here. Absolutely, there seems to be a lot of human. And... Uh, going back a long time, especially when you have reports of people trading with them, you get like the samurai chatter, you get things like the Sierra sounds that sound, make these things seem a lot, you know, they actually have a full language, which I mean, what other animal has a language? I mean, maybe some whales, I guess, have a primitive language, but not like human being being able to speak language. So when you add all this together, are they the Nephilim? Are they human? Are they some kind of an ape? Are they some monstrosity constructed. I'm not sure that seems to be the big question, but for a long time, I always thought they were some kind of offshoot of the Nephilim, some kind of a 
strange paranormal creature. And I think I'm starting to believe that that might still be the case, but I'm starting to think there's a lot more human to these things than I was giving them credit for and other researchers give them credit for. Anyway, let me know in the comments below what you think they are. There are no wrong answers, obviously, like Wes Germer would say. So uh, thank you very much. If you like what you see, please give this video a thumbs up. Hit subscribe. We got a lot more content coming out. And thank you very much, and stay safe in the woods.